Hi, it's me, your friendly reader, um, coming, coming in with techniques and exercises. So I've been experimenting and um, with other platforms and going live. I tried Facebook and that's really fun. It's really fun to actually communicate with people um, in real time. So, I mean, some of that is even thinking about like times, like maybe it's like when like I'm doing these, but for today, I, today is the techniques and exercises for the first hub. And so what we're talking about is like cultivating the physical sense of like trust, security. And, um, and so the prompts here, loop you have on so we're starting on page 73 if you're following along in the book maybe i'll hold this up for another second which is the physical prompts are the um are so they're listed as unclench bum unlock knees and plant the feet but actually to find this and so this is about grounding and finding like a sense of solidity um with the earth and so so one of the things about physical trust and is, is really like the embodiment of it. And I, and so for coming back into that, it's part of it is realizing what's always there. So one of the things that's always there is the earth and the ground. So it's like, so really connecting with the things that are consistent, like as far as like gravity and the sense of solidity and the fact that even when you fall, the ground catches you, but it's like, it's always there. Other things are like your heart and that, you know, we won't get into that for here, but so as far as like the prompts here for techniques and exercises is the K1, which is the like spot between the ball, like on the, the ball of the big toe and the you know, whatever that is, the second toe, second one that's a little bit usually, like, I think it's usually a bit longer. Um, it's right here in the K1 and it's plugging that into the earth. And so if, even if you play with it, if you're sit seated right now, you're kind of like roll around and you find that and you, f and you feel that kind of like pushing into the earth and even just like the sense of that connection, even if it's not pushing is like the, that kind of orientation that that would be the place here. Almost like two prongs plugged into the earth. And then rising up from that, which is unlocking the knees and softening them. So the thing with like rigidity is like in the, in the bottom, in the, you know, lower extremities is that when the knees are locked, it's almost like, like cutting off the circuit in a sense, like an electrical circuit. So what we want to do is like, we're trying to like, like, plug in a bit more into the ground. So, so the K1, we're starting with that. So versus like unclenching the bum first, which can, can actually feel a little bit like, what, like kind of like, huh? Um, first we want to create the stability and the solidity with like, like a K1 contact, then soften the knees and then release the bum and then reorient to the sense of solidity into the ground, softening the knees and like soften in the bum. You can kind of like circle, like circulate through that as you like find it. And so waiting in line, doing whatever. That's what I'm busy doing when I'm waiting in line. So I'm going to read a little bit from the first hub fundamentals, and then I'm going to probably pop off and go get myself something to eat. So there's that. And right now, what am I drinking? I'm drinking two things. I'm finishing strawberry basil lemonade here. And also, this is the pressed simple cleanse, which is water, lemon, allulose, ginger, and cayenne. So, I don't know what allulose is and fake sweetener or something. It's a little bit of a bummer, but whatever. Um, anyway, so I may, might take a couple of sips along the way. So here we go. All right. So the Parinama method first hub fundamentals. So like reclaiming the first hub involves conscious reclamation of rest, nurture, and trust, all nonverbal and restorative. In the first hub, we practice grounding, physical boundary, consistency, and completion. So that's not abandoning things before they're done. 
that. So more on that to come. You are you are already caring for and living in your body by eating, bathing, sleeping, and clothing yourself. The distinction in reclaiming this hub is surrendering to nourishment with conscious intention and performing these acts with intent that builds and restores trust and physical connection within yourself. What I mean by this is that it's really giving yourself these things as acts of conscious consideration, of conscious care. So, you know, with that being said, you know, a lot of what, what, what we're doing is for our nervous system, we're actually bringing this, these senses in. And it's likely that how we are programmed and how our nervous system has been tuned has taken these senses of being able to be like infant baby, to like fully rest and be safe fully rest and trust that the environment will be responsive. Um, Like bringing that back in by giving it to yourself. So it's like, instead of there being a sense of like, well, it's not going to happen anyway. The world's unsafe. It's like, yeah, there, there is a lack of certainty, but internalizing that so that there isn't like a full like giving and like swaddling. So the next part here is that, Doodly do. Okay. If you find yourself lying down a lot, curling up on the couch or in bed, first hub activities, notice what keeps this from being restorative. A subtle resistance of guilt or shame. I shouldn't be doing this. First hub restoration requires surrender by deeply relaxing into nurture and nourishment by reducing self-consciousness along with distinctions from, from, or from distractions from external stimulation. So I'll reread that. First hub restoration requires surrender by deeply relaxing into nurture and nourishment by reducing self-consciousness along with distractions from external stimulation. Thoughts like I shouldn't be doing this block the fullness of what's possible. Instead, think, what would a newborn do? And just wiggle around a little bit, snuggle up, take up as much space as you want and snooze in a cozy blanket cocoon. A cute newborn sleeps with its tummy relaxed and its adorable squishy body in whatever form is most comfortable. Try doing this and give yourself permission to release the need to be or do anything, just be. Now, as a counter to this, I'm about to, is if you do find yourself like like part of the restorativeness of sleep or even resting is starting to feel like, um, like a shutdown. So well, there's a dorsal vagal, so from polyvagal theory, um, exercise that we can do that um, can really help. So if you find yourself sleeping too much, and the t- and it's like and it's feeling like it's like it's a, a restoration um, in a particular way from like like hyper overstimulation or like or or whatever. Like you'll know you'll know what I'm talking about. It's like when it's like this the sleeping is beca- is like kind of becoming an overtaking thing is that there's a thing called elephant ears, which is put your feet, plant your feet on the ground and take your hands and pull the tops of your ears up. What we're doing is this is a door, like, so this is a dorsal vagus stimulation. And so what we're going to do is we're going to inhale and we're going to look up to the ceiling and you're going to stretch in the inhale, your eyes all the way up. Like, so there's even a little sense of a stretch in your eyeballs. So inhale up with this and keep holding and exhale down and look down to the floor. Keep your chin level. I do eight of these. So inhale up your eyeballs up to the ceiling and exhale down chin level eyes looking all the way down to the floor do one one more inhale up eyeballs feel that stretch in there even give it a little bit more of a stretch up up 
and exhale down chin level eyes down to the floor inhale eyes up you're stretching kind of like trying to look at the tops of your eyelids and exhale down your chin eyes down to the floor inhale up and exhale down do three more inhale up stretch your eyes up and exhale down inhale up and exhale down and one more up really deep inhale and exhale down release your hands shake them out a little bit move your arms if there's any tension in there kind of close your eyes just take a minute to land slowly open them just take a moment to notice how you feel So there's a wide variety. You can feel lighter, you can feel dizzy at times. Some folks feel like almost like a yawn coming out of their chest and into their throat. Um, but just take a moment with that. Mm. This is a tool that can be used obviously anywhere. So, and this is, when it comes to first hub, this is a like, a, so this is dorsal vagal, which is like, you know, down in the first hub. Um, and what this is doing is this is creating, you know, whatever you've just experienced. <laughs> so, um, so I'm just gonna read a little bit more. So even if you wanna sit back and relax um, and just take this in, and I will say receiving in this hub is simple, but not easy. We tend not to pay close attention during everyday acts like resting, cleaning, eating, and spending time outside. They can get mistaken as interfering, distracting, and delaying us from so-called higher accomplishments and functions. Sleeping and eating can be considered a waste of time and can be rushed through or minimized. The cognitive reclamation of grounding, boundary, nurture, and consistency is a process of intentionally babying yourself. This embodiment of bathing, cleaning, and cooking with intention restores this foundational connection within yourself. The Parinama method, or in the Parinama method, there are pointers for preparing for a practice, see chapter two, and you can find practices that integrate all seven hubs, see chapter 11. Through part two, throughout part two, the techniques and exercises are intended to offer an introduction to the practice. For each of the hubs, I discuss body prompts, conscious reclamation and seemingly simple behaviors, techniques and exercises for building capacity in the hub, the accordion technique for release, for releasing tension, and charging and discharging to restore dynamism in the hub. Ah, all right, we made it, we made it. You know, one of the things that's not highlighted in this reading is the importance of a connection with nature and in the first hub and how the feeling of being kind of like wing everywhere like a, you know the analogy i use is like a guitar string that's sort of everywhere nowhere or a ball a hairball that's like so tense like so it's just like it's like you know it's kind of like everything feeling like too like unpackable nature has a restorative property and especially if you can have like direct contact with it so it's like tree hugging so it's like touching a tree with your hand or bare feet on the ground but even just being outside 
you know, it's like if you take your shoes off and put them in the, your feet in the grass. But just being outside, around trees, around nature, has an equalizing effect that, you know, after about like five to seven minutes, you know, it can really, you know, it gets addressed later in the section. But, um, you know, I was watching this show called it's Top of the Lake, I think it's called, with Elizabeth Moss. It's an older show. I think it's almost 10 years old, actually. It's it's based in New Zealand, and one of the characters is played by Holly Hunter, who plays this, like, wise woman who creates this kind of, like, interesting commune of women that, like, <laughs> the whole the show is, incre is actually pretty incredible. Um, it's kind of like a thriller crime style thing, but really, like, a lot of like really shows this like particular like New Zealand picture of like lit, like small, small, small rural life in New Zealand. But the Holly Hunter character is kind of this wise woman that people consult. And she's very like, like mystical yet very matter of fact. And one of the things is she says, um, you know, there's, there's no fear of death in nature. It's just a reshuffling of atoms. So, you know, and, and when I, when, you know, when she said that, the thought that I had was how the closer we are to nature, the, the type of fear, the abstract fear tends to recede more. So, I mean, it's, you know, like the, the sense of the types of fears that are chronic, um, there's like, it's a softening. So for first hub, time in nature. And if, you know, and, and for even in your home, having plants, essential oils, there's, there's actually like studies done in Japan with the Shinrin-yoku Shinrin and the forestry ministry there, um, proving that there is a reduction in stress markers for even just having like a scent wood essential oils. Um, maybe that's just the ones that they studied, uh, but um, pictures of nature. So even if it's not nature, so your screensaver, the pictures in your house, like that, that just something, some type of deep remembering or connection with that. But anyway, um, that is all I have for today. Thank you. And any interaction that you have with this, uh, I'm going to be making better videos. My, I'm going to be getting into editing on the other side, the videos that I do on specific topics, this, these will stay probably pretty free form, um, as their lives. Uh, but I really welcome any interaction, any comments, please, you know, please like, um, if you haven't already subscribe, uh, it really, um, you know, it's one of the things I've really liked about doing the Facebook lives is being able to actually talk to people as they're commenting and um, hear how people are responding to things. It's been really nice. So um, even though, you know, we, we're not in real time in terms of a conversation, your comments, especially Mira, of course, you know, I'm talking to you, um, you know, are really welcomed and appreciated. So uh, thank you. And I can't wait to see you next time. All right. Bye for now.